Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. MTG Box Analysis here to get punched in the face again by Murders at Karlov Manor. Or maybe not. Now this is my fifth collector booster box. I picked up one from my LGS on release day, two through TCG player that I ordered at pre-order time, and then these three boxes that I'm opening up this week. That's right, I bought three more. I got these at a pretty close to today's market price of 160 bucks. So I'm hoping that things work out in the end and that I can actually break even on this hodgepodge of a mini case sourced from various places. Now, just last weekend at MTG Chicago, Seth Manfield won the Pro Tour for Murders at Karlov Manor Pioneer, and he did so with a Rakdos Vampires deck featuring four Vein Rippers as well as 56 other cards. So, as I said, this is box number five, which means that we are 60 collector packs deep into this set, moving on to 72. So, we've got 12 more packs here. Fully sealed and intact, we're gonna crack them all open. I'm gonna put the prices of the rares, the mythics, and any card over a buck on the screen. And then at the end, we're gonna go through the full MTG box analysis where we'll cover, uh, well, we'll see how much of this, uh, the set this box covered. We'll look at uh, duplication. We'll look at what is the current value of the set, the key cards to pull. And we'll take a look at what was the actual observed value in here and how I did compared to the market price. So with that, Let's crack open our first pack, look at 15 cards plus a clue token, and see how we do. All right, so here we go. Here's the clue token. There's the other side of it. They're all double-sided. Uh, and we got ourselves an Axe Bane Ferox coming in as our first rare. And then we're going to see an Aureola's Vindicator coming in uh, as a mythic. And then we're going to see ourselves an On the Trail from the Commander subset with an Illicit Masquerade. And then we're going to see ourselves a Lost in the Maze. Um, then we're going to get an unauthorized exit with the chases on, followed by a planes, Detective Satchel, a harried dronesmith, eliminate the impossible, undercover crocodile, benthic criminologist, gearbane orangutan, with a snarling gorehound in the back. All right, so I went a little bit quick there on the commons and uncommons. Um, we are actually looking for uh, one common and three uncommon. So we've got a crime novelist, insidious roots, and no more lies, all all uncommons valued over a buck, as well as uh, slime against humanity, currently valued around three bucks. Um, there's also five main set rares or mythics that we could pull um, that are valued over $10 and another 12 uh, I'll call in auxiliary flame, frames. So that would be showcase, borderless, dossier, invisible ink, extended art. You get it. All right, so we got ourselves a Thopter, followed by an Anzrag, the Quake Mole, coming in in the Invisible Ink. Let me see if I can get that to angle just right. I can't take my word for it. There it is. It's in the Invisible Ink. There it is. Ta-da. Very cool to see that. Uh, this is actually going to be a pretty decent uh, hit for us in Invisible Ink. So we'll just go ahead and put that right over there in the good pile. Behind that, we're going to see Alquist Prof Master Sleuth, another mythic coming in, non-invisible ink. Then we're going to see a Serene Sleuth coming in from Commander with a uh, Krenko's Buzz Crusher, followed by an Unyielding Gatekeeper. And then we're going to see It Doesn't Add Up, Call a Surprise Witness, followed by The Mountain. Then we've got a Killer Among Us with a Presumed Dead, Forum Familiar with a Topiary Panther, a Jaded Analyst, a Seasoned Consultant, with an unscrupulous agent. All right, so very cool to see one of the invisible inks so far. Um, so far, uh, I have found that if you pull an invisible ink, you're not gonna get a special guest. So uh, I'm hoping maybe we can buck that trend with this box. All right, so we're gonna kick off with another clue token. And we're going to see our first land uh, coming in here. We've got a Thundering Falls coming in from the Surveil Land series in foil uh, borderless. Very nice. And then we're going to see ourselves uh, Lazav, Wearer of Faces in the Dossier, with an unshakable tail. And then we're going to see a Relive the Past with a War Leader's Call coming in from the main set. This is uh, not quite valued at $10 for non-foil, but I would imagine the foil is probably just above 10 bucks. It'll be on your screen. And then we're gonna see ourselves a makeshift binding, followed by a slice from the shadows with a swamp. Then we get a case of the shattered pact, case of the flinched falcon, uh, persuasive interrogators, crowd control warden, vengeful creeper, 
followed by Hotshot Investigators and an Airtight Alibi. All right. So, so far, three packs. A couple of decent hits here. I really want to hit a serialized card from this set. There's only seven uh, cards serialized to 250, which means that there's only 1,750 up for grabs. So uh, unlike previous sets, these are pretty darn hard to come by. So we got a detective followed by a, a prothetic performer. Then we're going to see our second land, the elegant parlor, followed by Nelly Borka, impulsive accuser coming in, uh, mythic from the commander subset, not high value though. Then we're going to see a haunted bone brute, followed by a meticulous archive, another land coming in. Um, then we get the chases on, followed by demand answers, an island. Then we're going to see a hedge whisperer, followed by Tin Street Gossip, Sanctuary Wall, a uh, public thoroughfare, a goblin mask maker, a projector inspector, and a repeat offender. And just so I can keep track of things, I'm going to pull out the Thundering Falls so we can keep track of our lands, I'm trying to do a little bit better job of separating rares, mythics, and uh, in this case, right, the lands from the cycle. There's our clue token, followed by Relive the Past coming in in foil extended art with Analyze the Pollen. And then we're going to see Merchant of Truth. Now, in this particular slot from the Commander, what you're really looking for is Trouble in Pairs. Uh, it's a white card, and it's valued at almost $30. So keep an eye out for that. Then we get a Lamplight Phoenix, followed by Kylox's Volstrider, another mythic but low value. And then we're going to see ourselves a Fey Flight with a Magnetic Snuffler, a Mountain, Deadly Complication, Cornered Crook, Slimy Dual Leech. Then we're going to see ourselves a Thinking Cap with a Rubble Belt Maverick, uh, Market Watch Phantom, and a Crime Stopper Sprite. That might have been the worst pack of the box so far. Hopefully that's just the worst pack of the box, and I can uh, <laughs> not caveat it with the so far. All right, so we're going to see ourselves a Thopter, followed by Analyze the Pollen coming in in Foil Showcase, not the card you want to see in this slot. And then we're going to see Assemble the Players, followed by Showstopping Surprise. Then we are going to see Leyline at a guild, back, guild Pack coming in in a, a non-foil extended art. This is going to be the best uh, extended art, and in fact, the only extended art valued over $10. So hooray to that. Uh, we're going to put that over here with our um, Invisible Ink. So we got a Lamplight Phoenix, followed by an Auspicious Arrival. Another auspicious arrival, a forest, culvert ambusher, a breakout, then we're going to see ourselves essence of antiquity, rackish scoundrel with a bite down on crime, a cerebral confiscation, and an unauthorized exit. All right, so that takes us to the halfway point of the box. We are sitting at five mythics. Let's see if we can't get above eight. All right, so we got ourselves a detective. Followed by Hide in Plain Sight. Then we are going to see another land. We've got a Lush Portico non-foil borderless. Followed by Marvo uh, Deep Operative coming in from Commander. Another low-value Mythic from Commander. But there we go. There's a high-value Archdruid's Charm coming in in Extended Art. This is valued uh, just north of $8 uh, and a pretty good hit for us. Uh, and then we are going to see another foil uh, rare from the main set land. we got the Lush Portico. So that's two in that slot for us, followed by a Dramatic Accusation, Frantic Search, nope, Fanatical Search, <laughs> Strength, I can't talk. We've got ourselves uh, a Forest with a Green Belt Radical, a Knife, then we got ourselves a Candlestick, Slime Against Humanity, there's the one common we're looking for, hooray. Then we get ourselves Deduce with uh, Extracted Confession and a Due Diligence. All right, one more clue, followed by, this happened last time. So we got uh, Akras Kos Spirit of Justice. This is another invisible ink. Again, getting these just right is really hard. There we go, you can see it there. This is the least valuable invisible ink there is of the set, uh, and we pulled that one last time. But behind it, we are rewarded with a War Leader's Call coming in and showcase awesome to see this. That is valued over $10. Hooray. 
Um, and then we are going to see ourselves final word fandom, followed by ill-timed explosion and a Tulsimir Midnight's Light. Then we do get the Insidious Roots coming in and showcase. Uh, this is actually valued quite a bit in foil, so we're going to put that in our really good pile. Then we're going to see our makeshift binding, followed by a planes. Then we're going to see a meddling youths, case of the Gateway Express. Then we've got case of the burning masks, sanguine savior, the chase is on, rot farm, mortipede, and an auspicious arrival. All right, so that takes us uh, two thirds of the way through the box. So far, this one feels okay. Uh, we got Ansrag worth around twenty dollars, Leyline of the Guild Pack worth fifteen, War Leaders Call at ten. We've got five of the lands. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Got ourselves a clue token here with a doorkeeper thrall. Now, without touching this, I already know it's not invisible ink because it's not a mythic. So uh, the rares are not available in invisible ink in that slot. So we got ourselves a homicide investigator with an insidious researcher, deadly cover up, and a conspiracy unraveler. That's a mythic. And then we got ourselves Slice from the Shadows with an Expose the Culprit. Then we've got ourselves an Island with a Gleaming Gear Drake, followed by a Polygraph Orb, Case File Auditor, Sanitation Automation, uh, Rift Burst Helion, Demand Answers, and an Ally, an ally Assistant, or an Ally Assailant. It's been a long day, guys. I don't talk too much about my work, but sometimes the days are just really long. All right, so we got ourselves a clue token here, and this is how I unwind as I open cards. And then we are going to see a Kellen Inquisitive Prodigy coming in foil borderless with a Kylox Visionary Inventor. And then we're going to see an Otherworldly Escort with Steam Core Scholar and a Krenzo's Buzz Crusher. Then we get on the job a Curious Cadaver with a swamp. Then we've got Buried in the Garden, followed by a Furtive Courier, Exposed the Culprit, with a Nervous Gardener, a Bubble Smuggler, and an Innocent Bystander with a Basilica Stalker in the back. All right, two packs to go. Come on, shock and amaze me here. All right, so we got ourselves a detective with a doppelgang. Then we're going to see a shadowy backstreet, another one of the uh, um, surveil lands. Awesome. Then we got ourselves a Tangle Grove kelp, followed by Kylox's Volt Strider, another mythic but not high value. And then we're going to see Assemble the Players coming in. And then behind that, we get a Gleaming Gear Drake, followed by an On the Job. Then we get ourselves a Mountain with a Glint Weaver, Private Eye, Absolving Lamasu, Escape Tunnel, On the Job, Shock, and Macabre Reconstruction. All right, final pack, and then we'll jump into the MTG box analysis. Ooh, I see another land. All right, so we got a uh, detective with another shadowy backstreet, this time in foil. Very cool to see that. And then we're going to see the Wojek Investigator, followed by uh, Duskana, the Rage Mother uh, Mythic coming in from Commander in foil. Should hold a little bit of value for us. And then behind that, we get the Axebane Ferox with an ill-timed explosion, a Demand Answers. Then we get a Soul inter Intervention with a Forest. Then we get a branch of Vitu Ghazi with a Hustle and Bustle. It doesn't add up. A Loxodon Eavesdropper, an Outcold, Felonious Rage, and a Defenstrated Phantom. All right, so give me just a moment. I'll get everything sorted, organized, and be right back with the MTG Box Analysis. Let's get things started by reviewing the contents of the box. Now using this chart, we can see the cards that we were eligible to obtain in gray, the non-foils we actually saw in green, and the foils in orange. In the non-foil space, we ended up seeing 13 showcase, eight dossier, three borderless, as well as 12 extended R cards from the main set and 11 from the commander subset. In the foil space, we saw between 13 and 15 cards for each of the colors of Magic and Standard Frame, along with 12 more foil showcase, two dossier, three borderless, and five extended art cards from the main set, as well as one from Commander. In today's box, we also saw two invisible ink cards, but no special guests. 
Moving into coverage, in the non-foil space, we saw 36 unique cards from the 123 that we were eligible to obtain from the main set. This gave us 29% coverage. From the Commander subset, we saw 11 non-foil extended R cards out of a possible 47, giving us 23% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 125 of the 413 cards that we were eligible to pull from the main set, giving us 30% coverage. From the Commander subset, we saw one of the 8 cards available in foil, which gave us 13% coverage. Pivoting the coverage by rarity, in today's box we saw 64% of the commons and 25% of the uncommons that we were eligible to see in non-foil from the main set. We also saw 21 of the 69 rares for 30% coverage and 3 non-foil mythics for 13% coverage. In the foil space we saw 61% of the commons and 33% of the uncommons, and we also picked up 20 foil rares for 14% coverage and 4 foil mythics for 7% coverage. From the Commander subset, we saw 9 of the 39 rares in non-foil for 23% coverage, as well as 2 of the 8 mythics for 25% coverage. In the foil space, we saw 1 extended art mythic, good enough for 13% coverage. In the end, this box contained 50 rares and 10 mythics in 12 packs. Before getting into the value of today's collector booster box, let's take a look at the current value of the set. This chart displays all 460 cards that you can pull from a collector booster pack using non-foil market prices as of March 1st, 2024. Currently, the set contains 17 cards valued over $10. From the Commander subset, we have Trouble in Pairs valued at $28.79. And then from the main set, we have 10 cards in a variety of frames. The other six cards are Invisible Ink with the Vein Ripper taking the top spot with a market value of $42.49. In addition to these 17 high value cards, there's also 27 cards valued between $5 and $10 and 57 cards in the $1 to $5 range. The other 359 cards are currently valued less than a dollar. The 413 cards from the main set have a total market value of $702.06. The 47 commander cards have a market value of $60.84. This gives the murders at Karlov Manor's 460 cards a grand total market value of $762.90, which is up about $4 in the last two weeks. Now let's recap the actual observed value that we saw in today's box, starting off with a look at the non-foils. We ended up seeing two non-foil cards valued over $10 in the box. We picked up the Showcase War Leader's Call valued at $10.65, as well as the Extended Art Leyline of the Guild Pack valued at $16.26. We also saw two cards in the $5 to $10 range, and six cards valued between $1 and $5. The other 37 non-foils in the box are currently valued under $1. In the foil space, we also saw two cards valued over $10, including the Borderless Thundering Falls valued at $17.02, and the Invisible Ink Anzrag the Quake Mole valued at $23.15. We saw three cards from the main set valued over $5, including two more Surveil Lands, and we picked up 11 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 117 foils in the box are currently valued under $1. So how did this box perform? Well, the market price for this box as of March 1st, 2024 is $159.06, which is down about $10 in the last two weeks. Now, the Murders at Karlov Manor Collector Booster Box contains 12 packs with 15 cards, allowing you to see 180 cards plus tokens. The current market value of the 12 extended R cards that we saw from the Commander subset comes up to be $12.86. The 12 full art basic lands don't have much value at $3.04. The 63 commons have a combined value of $9.39, and the 45 uncommons are valued at $10.29. Now, the 40 main set rares that we pulled have a combined value of $111.11, and our 7 mythics are valued at $31.52. Add it all up, and the grand total for this box comes up to be $178.21 in card market value, which is $19.15 over the market price for the box, and means that it returned 112% of the market price in card value. Now, for those of you interested in cards valued just over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 20 cards valued over two bucks in this box, and they have a current combined value of $143.42, which means that those 20 cards represent 81% of the total box value, but only 90% of the market price. That makes this box not so good. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned as I'll be cracking Karlov Manor all week long and doing a special six collector booster box comparison on Friday, March 8th. Until next time, do something amazing.
Get early access to videos, download the analysis for every box open on the channel, and personally DM me, just like these fine people. All by becoming a member of the channel through YouTube or over at mtgboxanalysis.com. You'll find links in the description. Until next time, do something amazing.